sure that all young athletes, as well as coaches and trainers, have the necessary information to react to this kind of health problem and potentially save lives. Wow. Well, our, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. Our Nick Mantis is in for Audrey tonight, and uh, he's got to look at sports, of course. And Nick, there was a big high school girls soccer game tonight. Yes, yeah, Siobhan. Tonight we had a district opening playoff game between Charlotte and Jackson Northwest, and one team had to play without its head coach. We're going to tell you why. Plus, the Michigan State track and field team had a huge night at the Bloomington Regional. We're going to break it all down when we come back. This is the Six Sports Desk. Well, what a better way to begin Memorial Day weekend than with an opening round district playoff game of high school soccer. The Charlotte Orioles hosted Jackson Northwest, and if the Mounties wanted to advance, they'd have to do it without their head coach, Brooklyn Morgan, who received a red card in the last game and could only be with her team through her cell phone. Now, Northwest jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first half. We're going to pick things up in the second half because Olivia Lamb was weaving through the defense with ease and then just lets it fly fly from deep to give the Mounties a 3-0 lead just like that. We might already have to make that our six sports champion play of the week. Uh, Charlotte would get a goal not too long after that. Jalen Baker finds the back of the net to put the Orioles on the board. That would be all the goals that Charlotte would get because of saves like this from Skylar Tucker as Northwest wins it 3-1 to one and advancing to the district semifinals where the Mounties will take on rival Parma Western on Wednesday. And right after the victory, the Mounties made sure to give Coach Morgan a call. So what was that call like? I was so happy to like tell her and to let her know that we won and that I scored a goal, which was crazy. I always dribble up like that, but I usually just pass off. But I didn't see anyone, so I just did. I just shot it, and it went in. They played the uh, the game plan that uh, coach had set forth, and uh, we we did what we were supposed to do, and uh, that was our big thing: make sure everyone did their job. 
Well, speaking of high school sports, the first week of the 60th Dean Shippey Capital Diamond Classic showed us all that anything can happen on the diamond. Earlier this week, three-time defending champions in Grand Ledge lost to Portland on a walk-off hit. Then last night, heavily favored Okemos fell to the Mason Bulldogs in a one-run game in the quarterfinals. So now Mason will move on to the semifinal round next week to take on St. John's. Now, when we spoke with Mason's Dustin Budzinski, he shared how revenge was on the mind while also start, starting to get the feel for the varsity game. I've hit all right. It's my first year on varsity. It was a slow start, but now I'm starting to get into it and in that varsity mentality. We were uh, wanting our revenge big time because we definitely could have won those games in uh, league play. So just amazing. They're, you know what, they're an easy group to lead. Um, we have a great mix of senior leadership. Um, we have one junior that plays on our team and then the rest are sophomores. Uh, you watch Dustin and, and, and Jake uh, take care of what they need to take care of against a great team. Both of those guys are sophomores right now. So I'm excited for these guys to, to see what they'll do in, in the later years. In college baseball, the Michigan Wolverines are playing in the Big Ten Baseball Tournament this weekend. And last night, their game against Illinois ended at 2.17 a.m. this morning. And the Wolverines were able to hold on to beat the Fighting Illini advance to tonight's game, which is against the number one seeded Maryland Terrapins. And it's all tied up at one in the second inning. The last time we checked in, we'll make sure to keep you updated on this one as it goes final. Speaking of college athletes, seven of or several track and field Spartans are competing in this week's NCAA Division I Outdoor East preliminary round in Bloomington, Indiana. And they have already punched their tickets to compete at the NCAA Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Unfortunately, we don't have videos of any of them competing this weekend, but what we do have is this video of MSU distance runner Jenna Magnus winning the conference 10,000 meter race. She came in second place in the regional semifinal yesterday, only the second time she's ever run the 10,000 meter race. Then Michaela Perez finished the eighth in the women's 10,000 meter semifinal. She's also go to the NCAA championship. Okemos alum Sophia, Sophia Franklin cleared her first attempt at 4.31 meter bar for the women's pole vault, earning her a trip to the championship for the second year in a row. Then this evening, distance runners John Petruno and Morgan Beetlescombe also earned a trip to Eugene. Stick with Six Sports for more updates on the Spartans going for outdoor national championships, which begin on June 8th. We'll be right back with a final look at your forecast, so stay with us.